In this lesson, we'll be talking about another of the common question tasks you can encounter for critical reasoning questions, and in particular, some of the harder critical reasoning questions on the executive assessment where they ask you to identify a flaw in the reasoning. So let's first just recap the question logistics for critical reasonings on the EA. First, we've got to assume that there are going to be three to five of this question format in the 14 question verbal section. We know that there's going to be one to three of them assumed in each seven question half. And there's always going to be a single paragraph pertaining to a unique question task. So our best practices here, you're going to assume about 2 minutes 30 seconds per question, more than any other format on the uh, verbal section. But you do still have to have a hard cap of 3 minutes for any individual critical reasoning question. You will want to note the task of the question before even beginning to engage the paragraph prompt. And you'll consider skipping critical reasonings on the first pass through a half to ensure you see all of the questions of that half. Remember that you can't skip and return on the EA. So if you're having trouble finishing either of the two halves, you may decide, let me just skip over the critical reasonings on the first pass, get all of the sentence corrections, get all of the questions pertaining to the assumed reading comprehension passage that's going to exist before engaging these usually uh, more time-consuming question formats, you will have to take targeted notes to force engagement and try to proactively address the specific question task, in this case, trying to identify a flaw. And it is the primary question format to guess and skip in your second half if you have fewer than 15 minutes remaining after question seven. Again, you're just looking for opportunities to see everything more than anything else on this test. So if you're behind pace, under 15 minutes moving into the second half, starting with question eight, you may consider especially just blind, blindly guessing, maybe eliminating things quickly on these critical reasons so you've got time to see everything else. So how do we recognize and identify the flaw task? Well, first, there's going to be a reference to an argument in the question step. There will also be some key words, such as imagine that flaw, vulnerable, and the phrase fails to consider. And you have to be careful of mistakening a weakened, class, a weakened task for and identify the flaw task. So if you've got a weakened task, you need additional information outside of the little paragraph. With a flaw, the flaw should already be there in the paragraph if you just think critically. So that's the big difference between the two. Now, our strategic implications, you are going to have to closely note the details of the argument in order to try to proactively identify a flaw. There is assumed to be very little, likely no new information provided by the choices. So it's not going to introduce you like a whole new variable that you have to apply. You're going to have the information already in the paragraph. Maybe there's a slight variation on that information that you had to consider, but there's going to be no like categorically new information in the choices. You will, of course, want to try to categorically identify the type of argument to broadly predict possible assumptions because it's those assumptions that inform the flaw. Because you'll need to critically think to determine why an assumption is likely invalid inherently. So you're going to try to identify the assumption, and by identifying the assumption through the common argument, you'll say, this assumption doesn't seem like it's going to hold. You do want to focus on wrong answers, especially those that, concern, that address concerns beyond the conclusion, because really the conclusion is supposed to be inherently flawed, so you don't care about other variables that are outside of that conclusion's purview. And you can, of course, eliminate more quickly once a choice closely matches what your predicted flaw was going to be. So let's recap the argumentation equation. We know that it always finishes with a conclusion, and that conclusion is the explicit subjective opinion that requires some support. And that support comes from the premise, which are the objective facts explicitly stated in the argument. And the assumption is the set of unstated facts that must be true in order to link the premise to the conclusion logically. So to identify flaws, you really have to specifically identify what the common argument is and state why an assumption is unlikely to be true. So that's why for identify the flaw tasks in particular, properly categorizing an argument is especially helpful in trying to proactively identify reasoning flaws to expedite your elimination process. So our common argument flaws, we're gonna recognize these. The analogy of course says that A is equal to B, so it assumes that the items are comparable in relevant fashions. 
And a likely flaw is just stating that the items are not reasonably comparable in some specifically relevant way. Now, our representation arguments are going to assume that the sample is representative of the larger whole population in the conclusion. So your likely flaws are going to involve subtle term shifts from your evidence to your conclusion that make you think actually these, these two things aren't exactly alike in the way that the conclusion is stating, or some other reason that the sample is inherently unrepresentative of whatever overall population it claims to represent. So let's take a look at an example here. <clears throat> so we've got the task first. The political commentator's argument is most vulnerable to criticism on which of the following grounds. So we recognize the word vulnerable. We know this is a flawed test. We then are going to read the prompt, and you see we've already highlighted some terms for a specific reason. So the political commentator states, looking to artists for political insights is largely a fruitless endeavor. Most statements made by great artists indicate that creativity and political acumen rarely go together. In fact, most great artists hold political views with no more nuance than those of the average citizen. So we see in our conclusion that the political commentator is talking about artists generally, but the evidence is exclusively about great artists. And the conclusion, of course, is the very first sentence, so we'll note that explicitly and broadly predict what a flaw might be without any new information, which is about that term shift. Going from great artists to artists in the conclusion creates an unrepresentative sample. So if we have that in mind when we bring in the answer choices, this will help with elimination quite directly. So, well, process of elimination is a uh, process of eliminate as always based on common wrong argumentation reasons, starting with vague impacts. And we can see the average citizen here. Well, the average citizen isn't even in the conclusion. The average citizen is in the premise. So failing to consider whether the average citizen looks to artists for guidance on political issues has no clear impact whatsoever on that conclusion. So it's a slightly different category of vague, but we have no idea what the average citizen has to do with this conclusion whatsoever. You'll also have common uh, wrong answers that need additional information. So for instance, the amount of money that a great artist makes not being provided, well, uh, how does money deal with political insights? I don't know, so that's going to require some additional information. Similarly, saying that the argument assumes all artists struggle to become great, well, first off, we, don't, we, we do talk about artists, but we're not talking about artists versus all artists. We're talking about artists versus great artists, so that doesn't address our flaw that we predicted at all. And struggle to become great, well, just because they struggled to become great, did they ultimately become great? Are many artists great artists? I actually have more questions than answers, and that's not what you're looking for with any type of argumentation style correct answer, so we can eliminate D as well. And you can also have something that's actually a, stre a strength of the argument and not a flaw, such as the term political insight is not clearly defined. Actually, we talk about political acumen, we talk about the political views being no more nuanced, so that clearly not being defined is actually incorrect. It's just not true. The argument does a relatively decent job of defining what political insights are for the purposes of the conclusion. So that gets eliminated for being basically, an, again, a very specific type of reversal, the strength of the argument, not necessarily a flaw of it. But if we look at choice E, it ignores the possibility that the majority of artists never achieve greatness. This hits in very broad EA style language at our predicted term shift of saying, hey, artists aren't necessarily all great. And choice E is the right answer here. And it matches what we predicted as our flaw pretty directly. So considering some of the other common arguments and their flaws. So data evidence interpretation, of course, is going to assume that there is no other reasonable interpretation of that data or evidence. And your likely flaw for data or evidence interpretation uh, style arguments is going to be that there is another more likely interpretation of the evidence or some numerical uh, or the numerical data than is suggested by the conclusion. So basically, like the way that the arguments conclusion interpreted those numbers or interpreted that evidence isn't reasonable. There's actually probably some other more likely explanation. And then, of course, we've got a causality and we know that Almost every argument can be categorized as a causality, whereby A led directly to B. And all causalities are going to assume that there are no other possible causes or outcomes, and that the circumstance is not merely a coincidence. So our likely flaws are going to be that there is some other more reasonable cause or outcome, or that the conclusion does inherently seem coincidental. 
And of course, we also have our common argument of plans or recommendations. And these assume that A, you're going to execute on the plan or recommendation, and of course that the approach will work according to whatever the defined metric of success is. Your likely flaw for a plan or recommendation, though, is going to be that the plan or recommendation has some sort of inherent weakness that will not allow it to succeed, or that the plan itself is inherently unnecessary. So those are the common flaws you have with plans. So taking a look at another sample argument, and you can see this is ultimately going to end up being a plan. We read the task first. We see a flaw in the argument is that it's author blank. So we recognize the key term flaw indicating and identify the flaw task. So then we read the paragraph. We've got punitive damages levied against corporations found legally responsible for serious environmental disasters are usually far larger than the cost to adopt preventative measures to avoid the disaster in the first place. Therefore, corporations at risk of causing environmental disasters should implement safety measures to preclude such accidents to preemptively save money. So, we want to read the prompt as pre presented, noting the type of evidence provided to potentially recognize a common argument. We see should, that indicates a plan. And our conclusion is clearly the surrounding plan. And then we want to broadly predict what a specific or categorical flaw might be without any new information. And basically, we want to show that that plan to proactively implement environmental safety measures will not work to save money for corporations at risk of causing environmental disasters. So... <clears throat> Looking at our answer choices now, we want a process of eliminate for those common re uh, wrong reasons, starting with vague impacts. And there's not really anything all that vague. And honestly, the, uh, the vague impacts are more so about you don't know how this variable pertains to the conclusion, as opposed to being like a vague quantity, as it is in many other argument style tasks on the EA. You'll also, however, have answer choices that need additional information. And we do have some of those here, starting with Bases a position on emotion rather than empirical evidence. Well, there's empirical evidence about the cost, and it, there's nothing about emotion. So that's going to require a bunch of additional information. Similarly, we're not concerned with profits. We're concerned with the costs. So revenue is completely outside of the, uh, the scope of this argument, and we can eliminate choice D for that reason. And additionally, we talk about choice E, considers punitive damages a viable deterrent to corporate malfeasance. Uh, we're not actually concerned with the deterrence. Although that may seem generally a good idea, it has nothing to do with the argument whatsoever, so it would require a whole lot of additional information. You also have those task reversals, whereby it might be a strength of the argument, not necessarily a flaw. And choice A treats all environmental disasters as the same. Actually, it doesn't. It says serious environmental disasters. So it doesn't treat all environmental disasters as the same. It says specifically serious ones. <clears throat> so that's going to allow us to eliminate choice A. And then choice B overlooks that proving legal responsibility for environmental disasters could be prohibitively difficult. Well, this explicitly addresses that issue of why it might not actually save money, because you may be putting in place measures when it's actually very difficult to get the damages that are so much larger levy. So choice B kind of indicates why the plan is unnecessary and ends up being our correct answer in this instance. So as we move along to just the checklist for identify the flaw tasks, of course, you want to identify that task first by recognizing those key indicator terms and the premise of an ar presence of an argument with a main conclusion. Then you want to read the prompt as written, paying close attention to the type of information provided in the premise and note that explicit conclusion. If you can identify a common argument, you'll be able to more specifically predict what an inherent flaw in the argument is based on that type of evidence. But if you can't identify a common argument, you could just use the generic prediction of find a reason that the conclusion that blank is inherently unlikely. And then, of course, seek a match to your prediction, but eliminate wrong answers that fail to address the task using your com wrong, common wrong answer reasons. So that's how we address identify the flaw tasks abstractly let's go over to the whiteboard and take a look at a couple of examples together so to see how you will engage with this specific task of critical reasoning on your scratch work so we have a sample critical reasoning here we're going to set up our scratch work as we always do we got a b c d e we put a little line over top for the task and we can see the task term flaw right there so we're going to just write flaw so 
set up the scratch work with PF indicating predicted flaw. So we'll read the paragraph from the beginning. There's an airline executive who states, while our fleet of airliners can carry passengers or cargo, we would be mistaken to believe that our business can be successful by serving people and packages. After all, a plane that is outfitted to transport cargo will not be equipped with the seats needed to safely fly passengers from London to Lagos. So we can clearly identify what the conclusion is, which is that the airline executives the airline executive believes that the business cannot be successful by serving people in packages. And the reasoning is what comes after. Now, if you are really paying attention, you might be able to very specifically predict a flaw just by thinking through the circumstance logically. And to set up the conclusion, the airline executive talks about the fleet of airliners, but then shifts in the reasoning to a single plane. And you might be thinking to yourself right now, well, couldn't we just have some, some planes that carry cargo and some planes that carry passengers as opposed to like trying to have the same plane do both. And if you can do that, you've basically identified the flaw very specifically, and you can basically use that as your prediction. So we know that the predicted flaw is that just because one plane can't carry both, meaning cargo and passengers, doesn't mean some planes carry, well, can't carry one and other planes carry the other. Because we could just split up the planes if we were the airline company and just say, like, some planes carry cargo, some planes carry passengers, and that seems like it might be a successful model. So choice A hits directly on this flaw so that individual airplanes can be tailored for different purposes. Well, that's exactly what we were looking for. And on the exam, you might go pretty quickly through the rest of the answer choices, knowing that that's like really what we were expecting. But for the exercise here, we'll go ahead and find the explicit reasons to eliminate everything else. So choice B, the executive argument is flawed because it fails to consider that London to Lagos is a route that can be traveled directly or by taking a connecting flight. Okay, well, talking about direct versus connected, that really introduces additional information. So we could just say needs additional info here to clearly see if that were some sort of flaw. The most uh, that most passengers travel with checked luggage in addition to a carry on bag. This might be a trap, but again, like, OK, does that checked luggage mean cargo? I don't necessarily think so, but I'd certainly need in additional information to be certain. Now, the number of passengers on the average flight from London to Lagos. Well, London to Lagos is just an exemplar for the airline executive. This is not necessary at all and really doesn't do anything to the uh, argument. and. I don't love saying irrelevant or out of scope, but like here for a flaw, this has no impact on that conclusion whatsoever. And the types of packages that are most profitable for an airline cargo business, well, again, that needs additional information as well. But again, as I said at the outset, if you find a really good match to your prediction, you might just go with that and quickly glance to make sure nothing else is possible before moving on. Uh, at once you've got choice A being like, that's the flaw that I expect. So let's go ahead and scroll down. We'll take a look at one more of these. So once again, we set up our scratch work. We got A, B, C, D, E. We put a little line over top and we see the phrase most vulnerable. So the argument is most vulnerable to which of the following criticism. So once again, we're being asked to identify a flaw. I just put that there and we've got PF for our predicted flaw. So we'll read the paragraph at the outset. A superior conductor requires the authority to push even the most celebrated orchestra through high-intensity rehearsals. However, that authority is not simply granted by the individual musicians in such an orchestra. The conductor must earn that authority by winning the entire orchestra's respect for the artistry in her compositions. 
wow, that's a mouthful. And this one I'd say is significantly more complex. And you might not even be able to see what the type of argument is here. So this would probably be under uh, you know normal circumstances on the exam. The kind of prediction where I just say find a reason to not believe the conclusion that C for conductor must earn authority through the respect for the composition artistry. So this is kind of complex. And when we go through our answer choices, we really want to pay attention to how they relate to that conclusion, because it's all in this statement here that we need to evaluate. So it fails to enumerate each of the characteristics that a superior conductor must have. Well, we know that the conductor needs the authority. We don't need each of the characteristics. So that's not relevant to this conclusion whatsoever. It would need additional information as it were to pertain to the authority specifically. And so we can eliminate choice A. It neglects to define the specific exercises that comprise a high intensity rehearsal. Well, that again is really outside of the purview of the conclusion. This is talking about the rehearsals, which are part of the evidence, and that would require a lot of information to link to the conclusion. It considers only one possible method for achieving a stated goal. This is incredibly bland, but is exactly almost our categorical causal flaw, which is that, hey, there's a possible other outcome, right? Maybe the conductor can earn the authority by showing that the that she is really, really good at playing all of these instruments. That could be a possibility. So choice C, you know, obliquely and kind of working around enough in the abstract is exactly what we expected as our generic flaw. Now, choice D, it confuses the needs of individuals with the need of a group comprised of those individuals. Well, we don't actually outline anything about the individual musicians except to say that they make up the orchestra. So this, if anything, needs additional information, isn't especially pertaining to the conclusion. And if we predicted C well, we're not going to get bogged down in just like the convoluted nature of choice D. And then choice E, it suggests, it suggests that a superior conductor will only be interested in leading the most celebrated of orchestras. And that's just not true here at all. So it says that the superior conductor requires the authority to theoretically push even the most celebrated orchestra, but it doesn't say we'll only be interested in leading that type of orchestra. So this is kind of a task reversal. It's not a flaw at all that is inherent in the argument. So this is how you can potentially very specifically or broadly predict flaws to address this particular task on critical reasoning questions. So go ahead and practice some of these problems on your own to improve on this aspect of the verbal section.